click the bell icon to turn on notifications. So before we start creating our own macros and our own code, it's a good idea to take a look at how macros actually build VBA code when you run them. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to run a macro on this worksheet and we're going to keep the VBA window open as we do it so that you can see how the code is built. And then I'm going to show you how simple it is to make some minor modifications. So let's start out by taking a look at the data that we're using. So on this worksheet, I just have some UK software sale figures for 2019 and 2020. And I've got some subtotals applied to these figures. So you can see at the bottom of 2019, we have the total just here. And at the bottom, we have the 2020 total followed by the grand total, which is basically just a calculation of the 2020 and 2019 figures. Now, this might be some kind of report that I need to send out to a client or maybe a different department. But it might be that once I've sent this out, they come back to me and say, you know what, actually, the layout or the font that you're using in this report isn't what we want. We want you to change the font and we also want all of the headings and the subtotals to show in bold. So I'm going to record a macro, which basically does that. And I'm going to record it with the VBA editor window open so you can see what happens. So let's press Alt F11 to bring up the VBA editor. And what I'm going to do is just place these windows side by side so we can see what we're doing. So if we look at the VBA window for a moment, you can see at the top here in the project window, it says that we're in the change font worksheet, which we are. That's the name of my current workbook. And I'm currently clicked on sheet one, which is the sales sheet. And one other interesting thing to note here is that I don't have a folder that says modules. If you remember, once you've recorded any macros, then you will have a modules folder and you can access your macro code from within that. But currently, because there are no macros in this spreadsheet, I don't have that folder. But you'll see that as soon as I start to record one, that folder is going to appear. So what I'm going to do with this worksheet is we're going to record a macro that basically changes all of the font to a different style and also bolds these headings, subtotals and total. So let's jump up to the developer tab. And you'll see that because I now have my window smaller, it's only taking up half the screen. My groups of commands are now squished up. So if you take a look here, this one at the top is my macro recorder. Now for this, I'm going to turn off relative referencing. Let's click on record macro and give our macro a name. Now I'm going to call this change font and I'm going to change this to a font called Sego UI. So I'm going to add that to the title so I remember what this one is. I'm going to assign a shortcut key of control shift. Uh, let's do U this time and I'm going to store it in this workbook. So let's click on OK. Now you can see I've got a yellow warning message pop up there straight away. That's simply because I don't have this saved as a macro enabled workbook as yet. So we'll do that after we've recorded the macro. So don't worry too much about that yellow warning message just yet. The other thing to know is that we now have a modules folder and that literally appeared as soon as I started recording. So let's run our macro. I'm going to select the entire worksheet by clicking on this cell in the top corner between A and 1 to select everything in the worksheet. We're going to go up to home into font and we're going to change our font from Calibri and we're going to change this to Sego UI. So that's going to be towards the end of the list. And it's this one here. And then I'm going to change the headings to bold. So let's click just here and select up to font and bold. Let's scroll down and change our subtotals to bold. And then the final two here are also going to be bold. And let's just widen that column out and then we're going to stop recording. Now, before we take a look at this macro code, I'm very quickly going to save this workbook as a macro enabled file. And there we go. That warning message has now gone. So let's go over to our modules folder and click the plus to expand it. And you can see we now have module one. So if I double click, that's going to open the VBA code for the macro that we've just recorded. 
So let's walk through this code and start to understand what we're looking at. Now with any macro, you'll always find that the code starts with sub and then the name of the macro and also ends with sub as well. And sub stands for sub procedure. Now at this stage, you don't have to worry too much about what exactly that means. Just know that these kind of act as bookends to your code. So you'll always have sub and then the name and then end sub at the bottom. What you see underneath at the top is some text that's in green and it also has an apostrophe at the start. Now anything you see in this format, so has an apostrophe and is also in green, those are comments. So if you want to add some useful instructions into your macro or leave a note or a comment for someone who's looking at this macro code, then you can do that simply by putting an apostrophe in front of what you want to say. And what it means is that when you run this macro, VBA isn't going to execute that line of code. So if I wanted to, I could add something up here, put an apostrophe in the front and just say, uh, this is for the sales team, something like that. And you can see as soon as I click away, that turns to green. So that's for any comments or any notes. We then have the start of our code. So let's start to get a feel of the format. And this code basically walks through all the steps that the macro took. So you can see here it says cells.select. So basically when I clicked to select all of the cells in the entire worksheet, that's the line of code that it produced. It then says selection.font name equals sego UI. And that's the font that I changed my worksheet to. Then what you'll see is we have quite a few lines of code related to different font properties. And you can see that the majority of these say false next to them, which means that they're not going to apply. So it says here dot strike through equals false, dot superscript equals false, so on and so forth. And this is what you'll find with a lot of macros that you record using the macro recorder. Instead of it just saying, OK, I'm going to change the font to Sego UI, it basically goes through a whole bunch of other properties and says, nope, don't want to turn that one on, nope, don't want to turn that one on, so on and so forth. So effectively, all of this code, apart from where it changes the font selection to Sego UI, isn't really needed. So we could effectively delete this out and the macro will still work. And that's exactly what we're going to do in a moment. And then the final part of this code is related to really the second kind of step that I took in the macro. So this is where I started to make all of the headings bold. So you can see it says range A6 to E6 dot select bold equals true. So it's looking at A6 across to E6 and it's changing it to bold. We then have active window scroll down. So that's where I scrolled down the page and then range A19 to E19 select. So that's where we're talking about this row just here. We then have the same thing. We're changing it to bold. We're scrolling down and then selecting A32 to E33. So both of these rows down here and we're changing it to bold. Bold equals true. And then finally, if you remember right at the end, I auto fit column E to accommodate that newly expanded grand total. And that's the final line of code just here. Column E, entire column auto fit. So without really knowing a great deal about VBA code, I've fairly easily been able to follow the process that that macro has taken. So I'm going to click my mouse right at the end just here and we're going to create another macro. I'm going to leave this window open so you can see it building. So maybe now I've sent this to a completely different department and they've said we prefer a different style of font altogether. So let's create a new macro. I'm going to click on record and I'm going to call this change underscore font underscore Lato. Let's assign a keyboard shortcut of control shift L and click on OK. And you can see over in my code window, it's now put in the sub, the end sub and some comments at the top. So I'm going to go through the same process. Let's select the entire worksheet. You can see the code building cell select up to home into font. And now I'm going to select Lato font. As soon as I did that, a whole bunch of code was put into the code window. 
I'm now going to go to Developer and click on Stop Macro. So now if we look at our code, we have basically a very similar thing. The only thing we don't have for this one is basically this section of code because we already have bold applied. So once again, we're selecting our cells, we're changing this to font Lato, and then the rest of this code isn't really needed. So I'm going to go in first of all, and I'm just going to comment out the lines of code that I don't want to run. So I only really want this first part to run up here. So everything from there down, I'm going to put an apostrophe in front of. So now what I want to do is I want to test out my macro to make sure that it still works now that I've commented out these lines of code. Now, if you want to test or run a macro, all you need to do is click at the top of the macro where you have the word sub, click just before it. And then if you look at your toolbar, you have a little play button just here. And this basically allows you to run sections of your code. So this is going to run this entire sub. So all of this code all the way down to end sub. So let's see if our macro still works. And there we go, it does. So I know that deleting these lines of code is not going to be a problem. So let's jump in and let's delete this out. And then what I can do just to tidy this up a little bit is I don't really need dot name on a second line. I can just cut control X and paste this next to selection font. Now, something I also don't need in here now that I've deleted all of those properties is this statement that says with and then end with. So that's unnecessary as well. So I'm just going to delete that out. And let's run our code to make sure that it still works. And it does. So let's run the same process on our macro to change the font to Lato. So once again, I don't need most of this in here. I just need where it says selection font name equals Lato. So I'm going to select all of this and press delete. And I'm going to move this. And I'm just going to drag and drop it this time to the end and delete out the end with and also the width. Now, of course, you can tidy this up by removing some of these blank rows just by deleting them out, make it look a little bit neater. But let's now run this and see if it still works, which it does. Let's run our one at the top again just to double check. And yes, we are all looking good. So there we go. We've now seen how the macro recorder records code. We've read through our code to understand it. We've learned about sub and end as our bookmarks and how we can enter in comments so that certain lines of code don't run. And we've also seen how we can identify code that's unnecessary, remove it safely, and then test our macros by rerunning the sub procedure. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.